You know it's gonna be a bun day when you put dry shampoo in your hair and it does nothing. So up it goes. Barely used any hairspray for this. Hello everyone, I'm here today to do a video that I've been seeing kind of going around YouTube. I saw Casey Holmes did one, I believe Jessica Braun also did one, and I think Tati just uploaded one as well. And that is a video retesting or reusing all of these products that I used to love like two, three, seven years ago on YouTube. Ten years on YouTube. Whoa. These are all products that I loved over and over that I would go through product empties for that I would just continuously use and talk about and love on on YouTube. And a lot of them I haven't used in a really long time and I thought it would be a good opportunity to kind of retry them and see, do I need to be using these more? Do they deserve like a spot in my like everyday drawers? Does that happen to anyone else? You find something new and you're like, ooh, this is really good. I'm gonna try this for a hot minute. And then you try it, you love on it, you go back to the product that you originally loved and you're like, oh, it's not even close. So I'm excited. I repurchased a whole bunch of products that I haven't used in a long time and I'm excited to like reuse them again and see if they're as great now as they were back then. So give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on new videos every Thursday and also on Sunday. And without further ado, let's get into this. So first we're gonna start by priming the lids and this is one that I reach for a lot in my videos and that is the Urban Decay Primer Potion. It was either this or Too Faced Shadow Insurance. Do you remember those days? It was like the be all end all. And I've been having like a moment of love for the NARS one, so I haven't been reaching for this recently. That and the CoverGirl one. Their lid lockup is also really, really amazing, so I haven't been reaching for this that much. And <laughs> speaking of CoverGirl, we're gonna be using one of their eyeshadow palettes today that I used constantly and I raved about. It was so good, and it was one of those first experiences for me of finding an eyeshadow palette from the drugstore that was actually really good quality that I could get a good blend out of, that was pigmented, and I was really, really excited about that. They launched this, I believe, a couple of years ago. This is the True Naked Nudes palette, and I just, I remember loving this like loving this. These bad boys, oh my gosh, I'm in love with them. And they eventually started launching like a whole bunch of other ones as well. They have like a rose one, they did a chocolate one, they did a jewel tone one, they just like, they went all out with it. Um, but I really like the formula, so, and I haven't used this one in a while. Oh, it's dustier than I remember. <laughs> but I haven't used it in a while, so I figured it's a good time to bring it back out. I've been thinking actually of doing a video with either my full face, like following an old makeup tutorial or doing half my face following an old makeup tutorial and then doing half my face with how I would do it now. Let me know if you guys wanna see something like that. I think it'd be kind of interesting to see how my techniques have changed, the how I use the products differently now and also it'd be kind of embarrassing looking at old videos of me. <laughs> wow, I did not mean to go this dark. Honestly, they're not blending as nicely as I remember. I loved this palette so much and look how patchy it is. Uh, oh, oh, that's so irritating. So irritating. Try and blend this out the best that I can <laughs> so we can move on. But oh man, I am disappointed. But you know, you had what you had back then and like you just worked really hard to make it work. I feel like I should have formulas have come a really long way even in the last like two like a year and a half even and this was a really good formula back then I was really excited seeing how they were blending versus what I had been used to using but yeah no I'm not that impressed right now but let's finish this up and go on to the next step and this is the Stila Smudge Stick Waterproof Eyeliner in Damsel this was basically the only liner I used for like five years. It was just like one of those products that just like didn't budge off the tight line and I loved it. I don't think a lot of people talked about this one. This didn't feel like, you know, in the same way like the Urban Decay Primer Potion just sort of exploded and was all over the internet. This one, I don't remember a lot of people talking about. And it was expensive for a liner. Like I remember going into Sephora and being like, okay, can I justify spending the money on this? It was nerve wracking. Like I remember when I first started YouTube, you know, dropping a lot of money at Sephora and thinking, oh my gosh, what am I doing? But like, this is just one of those finds that I was really excited about. And I, I am excited to see if it stays put the same way it did like five years ago. Pretty sure I actually wore this liner on my wedding day. 
if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure I did. Now let's get some brows on before we go on to the mascara. I'm very excited about the mascara, guys. Very excited. This is the Urban Decay Brow Beater Microfine Brow Pencil and Brush. And I feel like I didn't do a lot with my brows for a really long time. I feel like I brushed them and then I would put a little bit of a tinted brow gel in and like that was it. This pencil is when I really started to get into like filling them in, experimenting with the shape and size and like how I like to wear them. So we're gonna go with this today. Oh my gosh, this brings back memories, the purple packaging. Wow. What would be that one makeup product for you guys that's like super nostalgic? Like maybe it's the first makeup product you ever bought or your first high-end purchase or something you wore just on a special night out. Like what is that one product for you? Wow. I don't, I don't like this. Oh, there we go. Now it's pigmented. Oh, this is a very hard pencil. It's not going in as easily as I would like. All right, I guess we're going for a really strong Instagram brow today. All right, all right, those look, those look pretty good. So let's go on to the mascara. Actually, first, eyelash curler. This has not changed pretty much since I started YouTube. This has been an absolute favorite. This is the Shiseido um, eyelash curler. This is probably, I think my second one. I think I like left it in LA one time. And I was like, no, it just, perfectly curls, perfectly curls every time, ride or die, will not give this one up. Okay, for the mascara, honestly, I've been meaning to buy this one again for so long. I think it was three years ago that I tried this in a video and I I fell in love. It was true love. Can you see my lashes? Of course you can see my lashes. You can see them from space with this stuff. I feel like it looks like I have false lashes on. Like I have no, I have no words. And that is the YSL of the shock mascara. I kept meaning to go out and buy this again. So I'm really, really happy we're doing this today. Mostly in that I get to use this product. Is it really as good as I remember that moment being? I, I just, I really want to know. All right, that is coat number one. Whoa, look at my lashes right now, everyone. Like that's not just me, right? That's one coat. That's one coat. Let's see what happens when I put two coats on. What even is this mascara, guys? I have to like recurl this part. I say this in every video. I have to do that every time. But like, oh my gosh. This is amazing. Amazing. So happy we're doing this today. I do remember from this mascara, just for those of you that are interested in it, um, that it does get a little bit trickier as time goes on. The formula is a little bit on the clumpier side, it is a much thicker formula, which is great for this kind of a look. Um, but I do remember it being a little bit on the finicky side, which I'm fine with. I will put up with a little finickiness if I'm gonna get really bold lashes. I wonder what happens if I put on three, no, I'm just kidding. And that's when Rachel's eyelashes blended into her brows. So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit, we'll recurl it, and then we'll like examine it again, but like, very much sold. So now let's move on to the face. And there were a couple of products here that I really went through a phase with and like really grew to love. And so I figured there was two high end and two drugstore, which I just lip, that's three, Rachel. That, you need one more finger, there you go. Math is fun. But I just thought about it and because I had a couple of different products, I was just gonna talk about them and apply two of them to my face, but why not just do like half and half, right? Two drugstore, two high end, we'll see which one looks better. So first off, let's start with the primers. So first is the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. This was my first kind of introduction into the world of Becca. This is, I believe, when Becca was first launched in Sephora. And this is one of their products. A lot of people had been talking about it online. I bought it, it was expensive, and I used it constantly. I was in love. It gave a beautiful filtered luminosity to the skin, and I really loved how it looked. So let's apply that to one side of my face. I haven't used it since then. Again, so many, that's so much, pro why did I pick out so much product? This is for half of your face, Rachel. Ooh, it has a little bit of a scent to it. It's makeup-y, like nice makeup-y. I don't know how to explain it. Not perfumey, not fresh, kind of perfumey makeup-y. It's a new category of scents, I've decided. Woo, look at that do though. All right, all right, I, I feel that, I like it. Look at that glow, everyone. Okay, I like it. Is it like blurring? 
And then for the other side is the CoverGirl and Olay Simply Ageless Anti-Aging Foundation Primer. And again, it was a phase. It was something that I used constantly. I loved how it looked and sat on my skin. It prepped everything. I'm a big fan of primers. I think that they do a lot for my makeup and just for my skin in general. It just like makes the canvas should have wiped off all, the, do you see this? Look at this, all that powder under my eyes. Good job, Rachel. Got too excited about product. Forgot to, you know, wipe off any of the fallout. And every single time I say fallout, I immediately think of the band. I just really liked it because it seemed to blur everything. I felt like my pores looked a lot smaller with it on. It felt really nice on my skin. Again, all the skincare benefits. So yeah, so we got one side that's very, very dewy and one side that's not. But really, you can't really test a primer until you put everything on because I mean, you don't just wear it like, I mean, you could, but I'm not. <laughs> so four foundations. We'll start this time with the drugstore side and this is by L'Oreal. And do you guys remember how much I was obsessed with the Infallible Pro Glow? Like this was my ride or die for so long. Like there was times where I was like, I just need to use a different foundation because everyone is sick of me using this. And this is the time of the beauty blender. So usually I would either apply it with my fingers or with a beauty blender. And this was, I think, the first time I found a foundation that was a very neutral base. And I found that was very hard to find in foundations. Look at that, that looks really good. Why did I stop using this? It's so pretty. And then for the high-end side, this was my go-to, especially when I was dealing with a lot of cystic acne spots. They were like those nodular spots on my skin that were so incredibly painful and they were really tricky to cover. But this did a really great job for me. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. A lot of people love, loved. It's, it's so good. And then we'll bop this in with the beauty blender again. This is a very full coverage foundation, which I really liked, especially at the time because it covered everything. All right, what do we think? I mean, like, it's really hard to tell right now. Hang on, I'm gonna show you guys. This is what my skin looks like on the Estee Lauder side and on the L'Oreal side. Like you can see it's starting to like break up in spots. It's like really emphasizing pores. Ooh, that's not great. So I think the Estee Lauder side is winning so far for me. Next on to concealer, we're gonna be using the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Treatment Concealer. Oh, I don't know if words can explain how much I love this product. It was just one of those products and I would constantly try new concealers and I would always come back to this one. I would try a new one and be like, nope, not as good as Maybelline. Try a new one, nope, not as good as Maybelline. But it has been a minute since I've used it and they've come out with so many new colors. They have come out with, um, they have the neutralizers, they have brighteners as well. Um, so I'm, I wanna use this again. I just really need to put it on my face. So this is the brightener. So I figured we'd try this one. It has like a pinky undertone to it. And I would always use my fingers for this one. Like that was my go-to technique. <laughs> for concealer. We're just gonna tap all of this in, get it all blended out. I feel like I used way too much on this side. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, and I got it right into my uh, <laughs> terrible eyeshadow. I guess it's not a terrible thing. Honestly. I feel like I used too much, so I'm using the beauty blender now. Just kind of like, this is brought out the product a little bit. I feel like I need to zoom you guys in. I feel like we're still like too far away. Now that is on. Just get those little creases there. And for powder today, I didn't use just any powder. No, no, I needed to use a powder foundation. Because I felt like my skin was always going through something, I always had red marks all over my face, I wanted to use as much coverage as I possibly could. So I actually used the Bare Minerals um, powder foundation and that I felt like really worked for me and it smoothed everything out, it added some coverage and gave me the look that I wanted. So let's... Put her on. I think it's really important for a product like this as well to make sure that your makeup is, has dried down a little bit. Otherwise it's just gonna stick to spots where it hasn't dried down yet. I didn't do it for under the eyes. I actually used a different product for that. So let's get the rest of my face set and we'll move on to the under eye powder. This is actually look, looking really nice. This is the original foundation SPF 15 Fair One. It's really pretty. I didn't know how it would look with all that coverage, but like, it's looking really pretty. All right, I'm on board, at least for now. For under the eyes, I used a lot of the e.l.f. under eye 
powder. This is the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. Something that was going to blur the look of fine lines, that wasn't going to settle into any creases, and was just really going to make that under eye area very smooth and just look well put together. This is the first time I think I also heard of like finely milled powder. I was like, you can get powder that's finer than powder? Whole new world. Whole new world, everyone. I'm just finishing up under the eyes and now remembering why I loved the CoverGirl one so much. It's because the, the highlight shade worked so well for me. Up until that point, I found all of them were either matte, which I didn't want, or they were too dark, so I couldn't use them as an inner corner highlight. And this is the first time I found a palette where I could use the inner corner highlight as a, a highlight, as an inner corner on the lid, and that was so exciting. I do love it. I do really love that. That was like such an exciting moment for me. I was like, yes! Finally! All right, I feel like it's coming together now. Okay, I'm kind of liking this. Let's do a quick curl. Oh, it's just so much better. Oh, look at that. So much better, right? And now the eyeshadow isn't looking that bad either. Like it started to like mellow a little bit. Now let's move on to bronzer. And I actually have not the first edition of the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Bronzer, but I do have the second edition because I did throw out the first edition finally, like probably only seven months ago. Really embarrassed to admit that. Here we are. But I just want to show you guys, this was the second edition of their packaging, maybe third edition, but um, it's the second edition that I had and this is what they have now for the Milk Chocolate Bronzer. This is what I loved and I used and it was the first time that milk chocolate scent had arrived in makeup that I was aware of and I loved it. I feel like all of the internet was obsessed with this. It does smell really good though, I will admit. I think it started out with just the chocolate bronzer and then they went in with the milk chocolate and they also did dark chocolate as well. Um, so I'm using the milk chocolate today. Let's do a nice bronzy thing. Nice bronzy moment, you know? I just, I wanna bathe in some bronzer right now. That's all I want. I could just take off these earrings. That'd probably be easier, but I'm not going to. Oh, I forgot how much I love this bronzer. Oh, it looks so good. I just, I just dipped my brush into the mirror and I was like, why isn't there any product? Next up we have a blush and this is a blush palette. This is the Sweet Cheeks NYX palette and I could never stop talking about how much I was in love with this palette. You got so many different undertones, you got some shimmer, you got some matte, they were good quality and like you could just mix it up. It was great for travel, like just everything about this palette spoke to me. So we're actually doing a more cool tone lip today. So let's pop on more of the pinky colors. Oh, it's so good. I really need to be using this more. Although maybe not. You guys are probably sick of hearing about this. For highlight, this is probably one of my favorite hacks that I came across in sort of testing out a whole bunch of different products and I was so excited about it. And it was using the Essence Single Eyeshadow in Grammy Goes Glammy and using this as my highlight because it was really creamy. It was super impactful and like really over the top. It was a good color tone for me. And it was just like everything. I was just, I was so pleased with myself. I haven't used this as a highlight in forever. So let's see, how does it stack up to my other many highlights? It has a little bit of a pinky undertone to it. I don't remember that. Yeah, it does, a little tiny bit. Not mad at it though. It's like a nice highlight. Like, look at that, it's pretty good for a single eyeshadow. Like these things are not expensive, but that's really pretty. Maybe I need to be using this more. Pop a little on the inner corner too. Really brighten it up. Okay, for the lips, I was looking forever to see if I could find, you know, the Too Faced, um, the, the original melted liquid lipsticks, but they don't, they discontinued them. But I did really love the melted matte in the shade Queen Bee. This was a favorite of mine for many, many moons. Really enjoyed the formula, really loved the color. Have not used this for a while. Had to buy it or try it. Oh. <coughs> That's a terrible scent. I thought everything Too Faced did had some sort of sweet scent. I do not remember that being a thing with the scent. Is that just me? Did I just get a bad one? The color is beautiful. It feels a little drying. I feel like we've come a long way with the matte formulas, like with the L'Oreal Signature Matte Ink. That to me is like 
my go-to mat. This is just looking a little bit crusty, just like a tiny bit. And I feel like it would really emphasize any dry patches you had on your lips. And now let's set everything down with a setting spray that is very, very popular, one I used for a very, very long time. And then I just stopped using. I just, I just stopped using it. There was just so many new setting sprays and new, like a lot of dewy ones and a lot of drugstore ones and I was always trying new stuff. And I felt like because I spent so much time with this one particular setting spray, I was like, I've tested it, it's great, but I, I need new, I need better, you know? And it's the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. I don't even need to talk about this. Everyone knows how good this is, but I have not used it in so long. It has been so long, I feel like, since I've used this setting spray. Like, I didn't even have it in my collection. I need to go buy a new one. Woo! There we go. There we go. Dry it down. I feel like I got, like, a really nice look out of this. The only thing that I am not loving right now is how cratery my pores look on the L'Oreal CoverGirl side. Not a big fan of that. They seem to be a lot smoother on the Estee Lauder side. The eyeshadow does not look as bad as when we first applied it. That was not cute. Love the lashes. Oh, I'm so excited about that. And the bronzer. Honestly, like I've been using butter bronzer for so long and I also like, it's also a love of mine. Like really dear to my heart. It is another child. But this one, I feel like I need to be using more. Like it's a really nice one. But now I'm gonna go about the rest of my day. We are gonna see how everything wears, see if it still holds up and should be reintroduced back into my collection. So I will check in with you guys tonight. We'll zoom in close, take a look at everything. And yeah, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay guys, it is now the end of the day. This is what my makeup is looking like. So let's talk about it. So first of all, above me on anything else, the mascara though. It is looking so ridiculously good. I have gotten a lot of compliments on it today. A lot of people thought that I had on fake lashes, which is amazing. That's all I want out of my mascara. I just want to look like I put in more effort than I did. The makeup stayed put all day. It looked a little heavy on my skin today, more than I would normally wear, I think for an event or going out or whatever. Totally good, it stayed on. I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the Urban Decay setting spray. But just for an everyday thing, it felt a little heavy for me. The lipstick was a little dry for me. There are so many other formulas out there that I prefer for a matte liquid lipstick. And the, keep going back to the L'Oreal one, that one is by far my favorite. I just love the formula. Color was really nice, not my favorite in terms of formula. And then the eyeshadow is still on. Urban Decay is doing well, but they weren't building up and blending the way that I remembered them to blend. I think because I used a lot of more natural makeup looks, I think that it worked really well for that, but something a little bit more dramatic with like a little hint of smokiness. Wasn't blending the way that I was expecting my eyeshadows to blend. I've tried, I've tried way too many now. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think of the makeup look, of the makeup products? So what are some favorite makeup products of yours that you've had over the years? Are there any that you've gone back to? Leave your comment down below. Check out the videos on the side if you have missed any. And make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on new videos every Thursday and Sunday. And that is everything. Thing. I hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome weekend, and I will see you guys all on Thursday. Love you all. Mwah.